Hello everyone, welcome to Vintage Update. I am your host Luke Force on the phone right now. Uh, I'd like to introduce to you um, a, a very, very close personal friend of mine. Somebody that I care for very deeply. And uh, Sean, are you there right now? Yeah, I'm here, I'm with you. I'm with I you. I know it's been kind of a bit of a weird week for us. Yeah, it's been a little strange. Um, I'm sure that it was somewhat shocking to you when you saw the video. Well, you know what though, we, we've, you know, we've had that discussion. We've had that discussion in private. It doesn't really need to be a huge public thing. It only seems fitting that I should come on here in front of the audience and on the air and, and really let you know and let them oh, know on, how I, sorry, I how sorry I am. But you went on, on YouTube and on on our Facebook page and, and everybody's I, seen it. And, and I'm sorry. And I'm sorry for that. And I, and I appreciate that. But you went on a second time and, and to me made enough of a public apology. I'm not sure that it needs to be here. We've had several conversations in private since then. That, and, you know, we've dealt with it. And let's try as best we can to just move on and deal with some some news. And there was some major stuff with releases. We got a pay-per-view this Sunday. We have lots of things to talk about. This past Friday, they did a series of what I consider off-time releases. This is not a normal time for, for WWE to be doing releases, and they released five uh, talent the last week. Vladimir Kozlov, who I think should have been released a long time ago, so I'm not that disappointed by that one. The other four releases, I'm somewhat disappointed by. And they were Chris Masters, who had been working hard, David Hart Smith, or Harry Smith, um, Gail Kim, who I know personally hurts you a little bit to see that one go, and Melina. Yes, and um, there is news regarding Gail Kim, just before we move any further. Gail Kim, they are saying they are going to be holding her to her contract. They will not be releasing her. Um, she quit WWE last week. She was not part of the releases. Oh, okay. um, but she did quit the company, and they are now saying they are not going to let her out of her contract and I do believe that her contract comes up at the end of this year. So, so are they going to have her sit there for six months? And... It appears as though that's what they're going to do right now, yes. So she cannot go to TNA until this contract uh, runs its course. Oh, wow. And you mentioned Chris Masters and um, the work that he's been putting in, which was mentioned this week, actually, on the CM Punk promo. Yeah. Uh, he also mentioned Harry Smith, not D.H. Smith. Yeah. Um did not mention Melina. He did mention Vladimir Kozlov. Yep. Um, did not mention Melina. Melina Perez has made uh, quite a quite a scene this week in the world of professional wrestling. This is coming from PWInsider.com. Um, as re reported Tuesday, WWE barred Melina Perez from entering Monday's uh, Raw event at the HP Pavilion in San Jose, California. WWE and officials. Strange because they were letting her tour with Morrison on the house shows in the weekend earlier. I read. Well, that is the bone of contention. WWE officials made the decision to ban the former women's champion from the arena due to their belief that she, had she entered the backstage area, she would have caused major drama in response to her being let go by the organization last Friday. But what is the difference if she got let go Friday? They let her go to the house show Saturday and Sunday, but then when they got to TV, they wouldn't let her in the building. Well, the entire company security team was told that she was not to be let into the venue. Uh, management has taken Perez's reaction to being released as over the top, as you saw on her video that she put on online. I did see that, yeah. Uh, a lot of people putting up videos these days, it seems. Yeah, um, well, Zack Ryder is getting a push into putting up videos, so that's... It's yeah. to the point, let's put it this way, it's to the point where many are saying that she has burned her bridge in terms of a future return to the company. Yeah. Um... And going on the road with John Morrison over the weekend was also a major point of contention internally in the company. Uh, company officials are very down on Morrison over the situation and over the fact that he brought his very released... I mean, she came to the next Raw event after being released. Yeah, Etiquette-wise, you know, that's pretty strange. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, I found it interesting, and I wonder if there's something to this. We, we saw the TV on Monday. Morrison got job real quick. Oh, yeah, and this yeah. is definitely related to this story. Probably should move on to, to this Sunday. There's a pay-per-view of all things, and um, we need to talk about the match. It's a one, yeah, it's a one-match show at this point. Yep. So going into this Sunday, uh, SummerSlam, one of the top three biggest pay-per-views of the year, 
as you mentioned, only pretty much a one-match card right now, although I guess the card's sort of starting to take shape now. But what do you predict for the outcome of the John Cena CM Punk match um, in regards to what you saw this week uh, in terms of the booking on Raw? Well, the way this is booked on Raw, they have done a job, at least from what I can see, of convincing you that you're not supposed to know who's going to win. And that's something I haven't seen in WWE since I was a kid. And part of me is really excited, but the other part of me that does things like this and is on this radio show that would like to know what's going to happen in advance uh, is kind of annoyed <laughs> as a viewer, but I, I know it's good for business and it makes people talk about it and it makes people spend their money and that's what they want to do. I I lean toward punk or some kind of weird finish. I lean towards punk only with the line of John Cena saying... Um, if I lose, it doesn't matter, and if you lose, uh, you'll go back. Basically, go back to the mid card. You'll be a one-hit wonder. Yeah. That was the line that made me think. Okay, I think CM Punk is going over on Sunday. Uh, this next story comes to us courtesy of Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Last month, Steve Austin made headlines when he said WWE should sign TNA star Samoa Joe when his contract expires later this year. Austin tweeted, "WWE should sign Samoa Joe as soon as his TNA contract is up." One of my favorite workers in today's game. Needs a full green light push. It appears that Stone Cold might be able to get his wish. Because sources in TNA have informed us that Samoa Joe has been talking seriously about jumping to WWE as soon as he can. Well, this was being talked about prior. And I know the sticking point then, and correct me if I'm wrong, was that he still wanted to get commitments in Japan. Yes, I do believe that's always been um, the stumbling block with Samoa Joe. And in terms of the WWE bringing him in, I do believe there has been interest. But then I've also heard stories to the contrary that there is no interest and it comes right back to the, the whole physical appearance thing. Well, I, I, you know what, right now, but with the change in WWE that is obviously taking place. Oh, Samoa Joe would fit right in right now. Yes, and that's what I have a feeling... You know, I think this is more feasible now than it ever was. And plus, if you have Steve Austin publicly going out there and saying, you need to hire this guy, they listen to their guys. They well, listen to their talent at times, whether their talent goes out in a public forum or not. When a guy like Steve Austin says something uh, to that extreme, I think you have to listen. Yeah. Well, and there's also talk of, there was a list of guys... Um, Kings of Wrestling from ROH. They will be coming in, ladies and gentlemen. So any fans of Ring of Honor that um, have watched the Kings of Wrestling over the last few years and their development as a tag team, I mean, just one of the greatest tag teams in the game right now, if not the best. Two big guys that can work, that have good promo. I mean, these guys are going to light the company on fire. And I can tell you right now, um, it has been confirmed that they will be brought in as a tag team. They will not be brought in as singles wrestlers. No, it, yeah, I read the same thing. Triple H, very much um, interested in rebuilding the tag division, bringing in tag teams from outside of the company, established tag teams. Which is good. I, I'm happy with that. There is also interest in the Briscoes. Yes, uh, that, I think that will have to the, the third team I saw interested in now know about this one. Did you see it? What's that? Beer money. Oh, yes. There's definitely in, a lot of interest in beer money right now. Yep. Um... But I don't know what their standing is in TNA right now. Not so sure, but again, to bring us back to Samoa Joe, his TNA contract, or his Impact Wrestling, I'm sorry, contract, uh, does expire later this year. And Samoa Joe, also a very close personal friend of CM Punk. Yeah, that would be, it would be a huge thing to bring him in at this point. Yet another story from our friends at Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Vince McMahon stated during last week's WWE Investors Conference call that Dwayne The Rock Johnson has agreed uh, to work multiple pay-per-view events. Besides the Survivor Series in November of this year, there is talk that Johnson, barring his movie commitments, would be on hand for the big three shows next year, that being Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, and SummerSlam. That is huge. That is absolutely huge. Now, we know he had committed to WrestleMania. They had actually shot the angle, and that's fine. And, I, and I, we, we all know that. The fact that he's committing to the January pay-per-view, which might be in our hometown, which I'm now very excited about, if that's the case. The Royal Rumble is rumored to be in Toronto, 
which is where which is where the war show broadcasts from. So that makes me very excited. To have The Rock in our wonderful city of Toronto would be huge. <laughs> Massive. For those that don't know, uh, The Rock's uncle, the people's uncle. Yes. Um, Ricky Johnson is is a Toronto native. And uh, The Rock has a lot of connections in Toronto, so that would be almost like a homecoming for the Great One. A spoiler from tomorrow night's SmackDown show. It is said that many within the crowd did not even know the difference between this Sin Cara and the real Sin Cara, assuming that they did use someone else under the mask because the real Sin Cara is still under suspension for his 30-day wellness policy violation. Sean, what do you make about this whole Sin Cara controversy? Well, I don't understand why you do that on TV, because... If the guy's under 30-day wellness policy suspension, as he is, and you've acknowledged it on your website, you've acknowledged it everywhere else, why do you bring the, bring a guy under the mask with the same gimmick um, for one week or two weeks? That's what I was thinking. It's like, it may be their way around it, but doesn't it kind of look odd on your website? Even if you didn't bring back the real guy and you didn't actually you know, create any kind of offense with the wellness, violating the wellness policy um, punishment. I just thought it was very strange that you would have it publicly on your website and then bring somebody, anybody back under the Sin Cara moniker and the entire, you know, exact same look. I thought it was really strange. I understand the, their marketing idea, the fact that they were in Southern California and you want to play to the Hispanic community there. They're, they're big wrestling fans and all of that. And, I understand, and you don't have Rey Mysterio on that show. And I understand all that. But that doesn't mean that you kind of, you know you know, bite the hand that feeds or, you know, hit yourself in the face by kind of making yourself look dumb. You know, I didn't really see a point to it. You could have just waited. I know his suspension isn't up for another two weeks, I believe. Well, it's not like you, you know, he is on the commercials for SummerSlam, but it's not like they have announced him in a match and you've got to get him on the show. No. I'm and and his suspension, his suspension wouldn't even be up for SummerSlam anyway. No. And so, he's probably not going to be on the show. Like, I don't think he was even scheduled to begin with. No. So, anyways, a very interesting thing. I'll be interested to watch tomorrow night to see if it is, in fact, Unico. Because I think there seems to be some conflicting reports as to whether it was actually the real Sin Cara or Unico. They obviously looked very similar, and the crowd didn't seem to know the difference. Well, the thing is, I happened to, the other night, this is before I read the SmackDown's post, I happened to be flipping around on YouTube and saw a match with with Unico, and I could see how they could not tell the difference. Like, I, in watching Unico wrestle, he, he looked very much like Sin Cara. And a similar build as well. Similar build, similar movements, or at least the way that WWE wants him to move. Let's so that way. So yeah, we saw the promo last week announcing Sin Cara would return this week, which shocked I think everyone. And I will be watching, and I'm sure you'll be watching tomorrow night to see uh, this new or old Sin Cara wrestling Tyson Kidd. I, I think that should be very interesting. Yeah, it should. Well, uh, Tyson Kidd's a great worker, and I'm happy that he is still there and, and working, as well as, as well as Natty Neidhart, and, uh, still there as part of the Hart legacy, and they're the last of it. So, and Tyson's such a great worker with the fast guy, so it was, it'll be fun to see. And, uh, dude... Again, I, I just wanted to let you know that I am deeply sorry about... No, 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 hey, we, we talked about this. We talked about this. This doesn't need to be a public thing. Okay, I know. I know you said that, but at the same time, I feel like I owe it to you to come out here in front of the audience that has, has been loyal to us and, and let you know how sorry I am and let you know that... I understand that, but you've already done that. You've already, it's not necessary. I'd, I'd really like to keep this a wrestling show and not worry about public, you know, let's not air our, our grievances or whatever in public, okay? Ah. Like I say, I understand your point, but it's like, I just, like, but this, like, again, we shouldn't be having public, if it's something, a disagreement that we have or anything else like that, that's private. And truthfully, I don't, I'm not sure it needs to be aired on a public forum where other people can hear it. I regret my actions, and nothing like that will happen. <laughs>